App Express fundamentally relies on uh, latency, round trip time, but it's a lot more sophisticated than you might think. It's not just ping something and see what number pops out and that becomes your latency score. There's actually a fair amount more to it than that. So the basic, the basic measurement in the system that you might point to is what we call total delay. And you can see this in any flow detail for any TCP or UDP flow. Go into the flow details, click the button, flip over to the performance tab, and you'll see that there are a number of scores there that are, are being enumerated on a per flow basis. One of those scores is called total delay, and that's essentially latency. It's round trip time. If you were to ping something, the numbers you see appear on your screen, you know, 20 milliseconds, 21, 20, that's total delay. That includes the entire trip, the uh, land side, the WAN side, all of it. AppExpress doesn't use total delay in its measurements. It doesn't use total delay to, to work its magic. It actually uses network to server delay. This part of the measurement, we don't really actually care about. The Edge Connect, what, what it's trying to do here is measure from the Edge Connect to the application, to the server. It's the WAN side of the measurement that we that we that we care about. So you can see here here's an application, it's Facebook, it's backhaul, it's got this big orange bar. This is wireless latency. This part of the measurement is not included in the App Express scores, only this part. So actually real latency from the location that we're looking at here to Facebook is 23 milliseconds, not 271 milliseconds. This this is subtle but important because if we included the land side delay, the wireless or whatever it is that's contributing to the land side latency, we would get a misrepresentation of the overall path to the application in question. So AppExpress explicitly excludes um, client network delay. Now there are a couple other things that we exclude. For instance, AppExpress only cares about LAN to WAN flows. So it's not looking at inbound WAN to LAN flows, only LAN to WAN. Um, it does not look at LAN to LAN, it does only LAN to WAN flows are considered for the measurements. It also excludes Edge HA link flows. So if, if you're on you know, two, edge, two Edge HA appliances sitting next to each other and uh, there are flows coming out of one appliance over the Edge HA link going through the second appliance, that second appliance does not consider the flows that are sourced from the 169.254 IP. There are some good reasons why you wouldn't want to do that, but we do not. It also does not consider its own pings. So you, we'll talk in a minute about how uh, AppExpress polls the application. It has a mechanism by which it, it ignores and skips its own pings. It does not count its own pings as a part of the, of the, of the scores that we use for the user quality of experience. All right, now these scores, this latency measurement, this server network delay score here, we just talked about, this measurement gets fed into a system called AppDEX, or it's an algorithm called AppDEX. So it normalizes large sets of measurements into a score between zero and 100. Um, these measurements are sorted into three buckets. So you have a satisfied bucket, you have a tolerable bucket, and you have a frustrated bucket. So three, Every measurement we take goes into one of three different, um, one of these three different buckets. Failed flows. So let's say that I'm I, I, I'm a user and I have um, uh, I'm trying to connect to a website and my flows are failing. Like I, I send no Synac or send Synac and then no additional data. Those failed flows count as F measurements. They count as frustrated measurements. So the general idea here is that if it's a satisfied measurement, that means the users are happy with it. Like the, the latency and the performance they're getting, it's it's they're satisfied. Tolerable is the, it's not great, but I'm getting my job done and it's not impeding my ability to do to do what I need to do. Um, the frustrated bucket here, this is for um, all the flows that are high latency or that are lost. So we classify the measurements coming in from the pings that we do or from the flows that we measure into these three buckets. They then get um, uh, run through this algorithm. So you take the satisfied count um, plus the tolerating count divided by two 
divide that by satisfied plus tolerating plus frustrated, which is the total count, and then multiply it by 100, and you get a, a number, a whole number between 0 and 100. We then further classify those numbers into four gradients. We have an excellent classification, good, fair, and best effort. These are going to turn into what we'll, we'll talk about. They're called the target QOE, or this is the QOE score. So if your QOE is excellent, you're in 93 to 100 range, good, 84 to 92, and so on. Now, the, where this fits into the product, one of the first places you'll notice is that each application, so when you go into the application definition screen and you edit an application, you'll notice that there are a, a lot of new things that have been added to the application definition panel. Uh, in particular, this entire section right here, there's an App Express button and it has three states, off, monitor, and monitor and steer. Um, off is just what you expect, we do nothing. Monitor only is essentially what we have in 9.3. In version 9.3, we monitor the app, we collect the per flow performance statistics, and we create the application performance summary and application performance trends chart. In 9.4, we introduce the monitor and steer option. And this is the actual App Express algorithm, the, app, the actual App Express mechanism by which we steer the flows in accordance with which path performs the best. So to turn on App Express and have it do something, you need to first identify the application that is important to you and then come it go into the application definitions for that app and click on monitor and steer i'll talk a little bit more in a minute about these other parameters but you're going to hit monitor and steer and then you're going to set up these user experience thresholds this is where the t and the f boundary from the AppDex algorithm come into play each application has a, uh, a configurable t and f boundary the default is uh 100 and 300 and these are auto set by the portal by the edge connect by the silver peak cloud portal automatically for you for a lot of popular applications but the main idea here is that different apps will have different tnf boundaries the point at which somebody becomes frustrated with an application's performance will vary depending on the nature of the application for instance for voice uh, voice traffic you really can't notice a difference up until about 200 milliseconds generally now but once you get above about 350 you will it becomes challenging to talk to folks because you step on each other and you get it, it's um 350 plus you're in the frustrated range interestingly though with dropbox and volume oriented tcp based applications you need lower latency i know some people say but I, wait i thought voice and video needed like ultra low latency not really I talk to people from all over the world in India and folks all the time at 220 plus milliseconds and you don't even notice it. But with TCP based applications, you need short turns. You need 100 milliseconds or less to get high throughput. So TCP is actually quite a bit more sensitive to latency than multimedia collaborative applications such as video or voice. So you will end up with different TNF boundaries depending on the nature of the app. And you can configure that. You can set this yourself per application, or you can let the cloud portal set it for you automatically. So what we do is imagine this is one, what we call a ping QOE interval or user QOE interval. We, we're continuously pinging. So we take all these measurements, 16, 18, 18, 22, this is milliseconds. You take all these numbers and you compare them to the T and F boundary. All of these numbers are below the the t boundary means they're below 50. so that means that when we go to compute the aptex score all of these numbers will fit into the satisfactory or satisfied uh, bucket so that when you do the math you say you know s satisfied plus tolerable divided by two divided by total samples you're going to get one we multiply it by 100 and you're going to get a perfect 100 score so if all your measurements fall into the satisfied bucket your aptex is logically going to going to work out to a score of 100. So in this example, we had a short period where the latency went up at 140, and then we had a fail. So, so the users tried to connect to a, an application and it didn't respond, or we tried to ping something and it didn't respond. That counts as a frustrated. It's an infinite latency, so it goes into the, the frustrated bucket. We had two measurements that were up 
above the T boundary, so they fall into the tolerable bucket. And we had eight measurements that go into the satisfactory bucket. So now we do the math, eight plus two divided by two divided by 11, and we get 0 0.81. So we get an 81 score. And you can see how wildly different that is. Average would have given us 55. A median would have given us 18, neither of which of these are all that useful. So we're transforming a series of numbers into this single, uh, the single indicator. So this series of measurements would result in a, a score of fair. Here's another example here. We don't have a frustrated. In this case, we uh, we're satisfied, 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 and then three tolerables and some more satisfieds. This works out to an 86. I just want you guys to know how this works. You don't have to memorize algorithms or any of this sort of thing. Um, in most cases, you you might not ever even think about this again. But when you see Aptex numbers or Aptex scores, I want you to at least have a feeling in your head of where they came from. And it's not like some kind of super black box voodoo magic. It's a very straightforward um, algorithm or you know, index that can be understood and predicted 